There's nothing like experiencing music live and in person. But at this moment, stages are dark as the COVID-19 pandemic threatens the very existence of live music venues. On Destination Live Music Comeback Road, we're going inside some of West Michigan's favorite music spots to discover their rich histories, take a look behind the scenes, hear how the pandemic is affecting them, and how you, the fans, can show your support. Join us on the path to Destination Live Music Comeback Road, West Michigan. My name is Ted Smith. I'm one of the owners of Tip Top Deluxe Bar and Grill in Grand Rapids, Michigan. What are the, thing, what are the major things that have happened since last October affecting the business? Well, I, I think things are still happening fairly slowly, but there is finally some assistance coming for small music venues, independently owned music venues. Most exciting for us right away was that we had our grant approved by the state, so we'll be receiving those funds shortly. And then in the beginning of April, the federal government will start accepting grant applications. So that's really going to allow us to, I guess, get a solid restart. How important was the Michigan program? I extremely. Just being closed last year for the, the year that we were closed cost around $30,000. Getting the word that that grant had been accepted and how much we were getting couldn't have come at a better time. Very happy, you know, to have gotten that email that we will be getting those funds. So, and now I just need them to hit the bank. So there was a statewide organization that was established for independent venues, the MIVPA, yeah. Michigan Independent Venue and Promoter Association. What, what was your read on how influential they were? They were very important in communicating to our state senators and legislators, you know, how important businesses like this are to the community and, and the role we play and how other restaurants and hotels and other businesses do feed off uh, what we generate and bring to the community. What is the status of the federal money that that bill was passed at the end of last year? That's been real frustrating because we, you know, haven't really gotten a lot of information until just recently. They're going to start taking applications on April 8th. Hopefully that process goes smoothly. And again, that's just going to be massively important to ensuring the survival of businesses like this. So when you combine the state money and the federal money, how vital is that? Or how significant is that recouping your losses from 2020? Oh, I mean, I think it's going to be huge. We're going to need those funds to survive because a lot of the bills really don't change whether there's 10 people in here or there's 150 people in here. Let's flip the coin on that a situation for a second. So if those things hadn't come across, if the state hadn't, you know, been convinced to support venues like yours and the federal government had come through, where would you be right now? Probably be talking to real estate agents, <laughs> listing the property, selling the liquor license. Is that, is that dire? Yeah, absolutely. Without knowing they're on the way, you know, we wouldn't be open at this point. You know, we'd still, it'd be a big question mark hanging over our heads, what's gonna happen? Let's talk about the fact that you are open now. So when did you uh, open the doors? We officially reopened last Friday. We didn't even have heat at the time. Our gas had been shut off. And, uh, but I was like, I've spent so much money. I just want to reopen, so let's do it. So what are your hours? Uh, we're just open Tuesday through Saturday from four o'clock till 11 o'clock. 11 is when we have to close right now by the state's mandate. And we're at 50% capacity, which is 70 people. So I'm setting ticket sales at 60 tickets sold, and then that allows for the bands and the staff to, to make up that other 10 people. What's the best way for people to find out about what's going on, what's coming up on, on your account? Um, our Facebook page is the most immediate way for me to get up information about what's going on, and I'm very active on that and posting multiple times a day. And now, have you, have you uh, redone the menu? And what else? No, we're still going with the, the menu that we had before. We get our beef from... Farmer John Shagbark Farms, great burgers. How would you describe your role in the TikTok? What I tell people is that I'm a, a brand ambassador and head carnival barker. Okay. So I, I, I say only good things about the tip top because that's all there is really to say about it. I introduce bands. I'm a, I'm a great hype man, pitch man, I guess you could, you could say. Is this a volunteer 
position you occupy? Correct. Yeah, I, I, I don't get paid. The pleasure of being here is plenty good enough for me. They serve my burger here. I am a farmer, as, as a lot of people know. I raise Angus cattle, and the Tip Top buys my hamburger, and that's what they serve here. And just seeing the satisfaction on everybody's faces eating my food is, that's, that's pay enough. It really is. People don't really treat us like a restaurant, unfortunately. We don't have a lot of people that come here like, oh, you know, it's five o'clock, let's go to Tip Top and get a burger. We don't have a lot of that clientele. That, that, that's what we really need. We, you know, being at 50% capacity and the shows being cut down and, you know, we're, we're losing a lot of income there. I'm hoping that maybe people will realize we need your support as just a bar restaurant. So I know you've been really creative in the past with uh, merch. So where did you come up with? We've got four brand new t-shirts that we're selling and we're just selling those here at the bar. You know, and, and three of them were kind of my ideas. And then the other one was a local artist, Anthony Carpenter, who very creative and just, you know, came up with his own thing. Which t-shirt is that? Um, that's the one that we're actually using as the back of our menu right now. Is there anything you learn about yourself in this experience? And I'm a survivor. I, I, you know, try to be optimistic. I, I love the music. I wish more people would come in and just recognize like, hey, this is a great place to get a burger and a beer. And you don't always have to come because there's a show. But we are very dependent on those shows to bring people in. What have you found from the um, artists in the things? What, what, what's going on on that side of it? With agents and the bands I've talked to so far, I mean, there's there's definitely bands that are just eager and they're ready and they're wanting to come now and start playing. There's other bands that are like, well, we want to wait till we get our vaccine and then we'll, you know, talk dates in a couple months. Right now, working with the, the local bands and there's so many great local bands that, you know, are eager and do want to get in here and play. So April's booked up and I'm starting into May right now. I'm confident that, you know, we're going to get real quality entertainment in here that will, you know, keep our schedule going and keep the people coming in. What are you doing to ensure safety for the customers coming through the door during this you know, reopening period? The staff is all masked. You know, customers, when they come in, are required to wear their masks. They can take them off once they're seated. Uh, but if they get up to walk around to go to the bar, to the bathroom, or outside to have a cigarette, they need to wear their mask while they're walking through the, the venue. We're doing the best we can with the, the space we have to try to make it safe for people. Let's talk about staff. How many people did you have on staff? Uh, we had nine people on staff. I really only had one hourly employee that was able to come back, and then my sound man, Cliff, is coming back. Uh, Cliff Thomas. I'm the sound technician. I've been here for going on five years. When you get up on the board, what's your goal? My main focus is the vocals. My job is to get people's voice heard at a proper level with everything else. To your knowledge, how many places like this have sound men? This size, not too many. Generally have to be a little bigger than this to find some place with a dedicated sound tech. It's just a kind of a symbol of Ted being more serious about having the bands here. What's the best thing that you're feeling right now about where you are at this point? There's a huge feeling of relief to finally be reopened. To get live music back in here is really exciting. And just to interact with, you know, the customers and so many of them who are, you know, real regulars that come here for a lot of shows. Um, so, yeah, I, you know, I look forward to that again, to seeing those faces and with the masks. Yeah. I won't recognize it. Who are you? <laughs> what do you see ahead? And what, what's, what's the road look like ahead? The hope is, I guess, by fall to be back to 100% capacity. I hope that people, during the year that we've been gone, that people will appreciate, like, gee, I missed the tip top, and that they'll come back because they missed it. <laughs> you know? I hope they understand that we, we need you to survive, but we're going to need your continued support to make this work. We wish you all the best in the near future, and thank you for your time today. really appreciate it. Thank you.